In this video I will talk about the cross product in R3. But first of all I want to remind or show you how the determinant of a 2 times 2 matrix can be computed. Let A be a 2 times 2 matrix with entries in the real numbers. So A could look like this. With real numbers A, B, C and D. Then the determinant of A is equal to A times D minus B times C. I will now show you how the cross product of two vectors in R3 can be computed. Let x and y be some vectors in R3. The vector x has the entries a, b and c. The vector y has the entries d, e and f. The cross product of the vectors x and y is another vector in R3, which can be computed the following way. For the first entry of the cross product vector, you cross out the first row here. The first entry of the cross product is equal to the determinant of this 2 times 2 submatrix. That means it is equal to B times F minus C times E. For the second entry of the cross product, you have to cross out the second row here. The second entry is equal to minus the determinant of this submatrix here. So it is equal to C times D minus A times F. Please don't forget the minus sign here. So it's minus the determinant of this submatrix. For the last entry of the cross product, you cross out the last row. The last entry is equal to the determinant of this 2 times 2 submatrix. That means it is equal to a times E minus B times D. This vector here is called the cross product of X and Y. Before I will show you some basic properties of the cross product, we will take a look at an example. x is equal to the vector 1, 1, 1 and y is equal to the vector 1, 2 and 3. We are going to compute the cross product of x and y. For the first entry of the cross product, we have to ignore the first row and then we have to compute the determinant of this 2 times 2 submatrix. So the first entry is equal to 1 times 3 minus 1 times 2, which is equal to 1. For the second entry we cross out the second row. The second entry is equal to minus the determinant of this 2 times 2 submatrix. So the second entry is equal to 1 times 1 minus 1 times 3. And this is equal to minus 
2. Please don't forget the minus sign. So it's minus the determinant of this 2 times 2 submatrix. For the last entry, you cross out the last row. The last entry is equal to the determinant of this 2 times 2 submatrix. So it's equal to 1 times 2 minus 1 times 1. And this is equal to 1. So this vector here is the cross product of x and y. The cross product of two vectors is important because it computes a vector which is orthogonal to both vectors involved in the cross product. I will now explain what it means mathematically for two vectors in R3 to be orthogonal. Let x and y be some vectors in R3 again. We define the so-called standard scalar product or dot product of x and y the following way. x dot y is defined as a times d plus b times e plus c times f. Two vectors x and y are said to be orthogonal if the standard scalar product of x and y is equal to zero. The orthogonality of x and y is usually denoted like this. X orthogonal to y. This mathematical formulation of orthogonality is exactly the geometrical idea of orthogonality we are used to. Now we can take a look at some basic properties of the cross product. Let s be a real number. Let x, y and z be some vectors in R3. I will start with the most important property. The cross product of x and y is orthogonal to x and orthogonal to y. That means x cross y dot x is equal to zero and x cross y dot y is equal to zero. So the cross product of x and y is orthogonal to x and y. For example, if x and y look like that, the cross product looks like this. And you can see it is orthogonal to both x and y. Let's take a look at our last example again. The cross product is equal to this vector here. The dot product of the cross product and x is equal to this here. And this is equal to 1 times 1 minus 2 times 1 plus 1 times 1. And this is equal to zero. And x cross y dot y is equal to this here. And this is equal to one times one minus two times two plus one times three. And this is equal to zero. So, as I have said before, the cross product is always orthogonal to the vectors involved in the cross product. Which we have checked here directly.
here I also have an illustration of the vectors x, y and the cross product of x and y. Ok, let's take a look at the properties again. The cross product of x and y is not equal to zero if and only if x and y are linear independent. So you can say the cross product becomes zero if one vector in the cross product is a multiple of the other vector. The cross product is bilinear. That means x plus sy cross z is equal to x cross z plus s y cross z. And x cross y plus s z is equal to x cross y plus s x cross z. So the cross product is bilinear. The cross product is anti-symmetric. That means x cross y is equal to minus y cross x. The cross product is not associative. So in general, x cross y in brackets cross z is not equal to x cross y cross z in brackets. To see this, we take a look at the following example. So this cross product here is equal to this vector, 0, 0, 1. And this cross product here is equal to the vector minus 1, 0, 0. Ok, now we change the position of this bracket here from here to there. Now this cross product here is equal to 0. And this cross product here is equal to 0, 0, 0, 2. Now these two vectors are not the same. So they are not equal. That means the cross product is not associative. Ok, I hope you now understand the cross product in R3 a little better. Actually the cross product in R3 is a pretty helpful tool in linear algebra. In one of my next videos I will show you some basic things you can do with the cross product. If you are looking for more advanced things, support me on Patreon and get my cross product guide. Your support can keep this channel alive. Also, the guide is still in an early stage. Maybe with some support I would find the time to further improve it, add some new ideas to it and translate the rest into English. I could also upload videos for example about the approaches in the guide exclusively for my supporters. Ok, and as always, if you liked this video, please consider subscribing to my channel. That would help and motivate me to keep creating videos.